It is the Sports Fix here on Flow FM, and let's have a look now at the weekend that was and what's to come in Hume Cricket. Uh, joining me on the line, as always, from Cricket Albury, Wodonga, Stephen Bennett is back. How are you, Stephen? Great, thanks, Jason. Good to be here. Good to have you back, mate. Look, we've got uh, three of four scheduled matches to talk about today, and uh, another uh, situation where, look, Harvest has got to take precedent. I think I've said this about a dozen times so far this week, but there was one game where, unfortunately, uh, one of the teams couldn't get uh, enough to get going. Yes, yeah, Rand, unfortunately, couldn't um, put together a side um, to play Brock Burham. Harvest, like for everywhere else, is uh, all over the place at the moment. They're having a crack when they can, and it just didn't work out for the Ram boys last week, but... Uh, They've got the bye this week, so they will, they'll no doubt have the Christmas break and come back bigger and better than ever. Indeed, and at the moment, of course, uh, we, as we know, racing a significant rain event, unfortunately. Another one. Uh, geez, you guys have copped it so far through this harvest period with the weather, haven't you? Yeah, it's been really tough for the locals. Uh, just can't seem to get a good run out at the moment, but they're, uh, they're a fairly resilient lot, so uh, no doubt they'll get through it. But, uh, yeah, it's going to p- push them right into... Uh, in through Christmas, I think, now. Uh, well, let's talk about the uh, the action that did happen, uh, what cricket did get played. We might start with Walla Walla taking on Lockhart. And, uh, well, as predicted, it was a fairly comfortable win in the end for Walla Walla. Walla batted first, and they made, uh, made 174, just lost five wickets, and just pretty consistent across the batting there. Um, a few blokes got, got good starts. You know, they batted the overs out and... and the grounds are still a little bit heavy, so uh, 174 is a pretty good score at Walla. Um, I think uh, top score was um, Simon Odewan with 43. No, that wasn't a bad performance. A lot of starts there. Uh, 174 is going to get it done most of the time, and it was too many for Lockhart, who ended up, um, well, 9 for uh, 84, but uh, I assume they only had the 10, so basically bowled out for 84, right? Yeah, that's right, and with the what we were just discussing earlier with the harvest. That, uh, you'll see that across quite a few teams at the moment, playing uh, playing one or two short in both senior grades. So mm-hmm. uh, that was uh, the case there, I would have thought. Um, yeah, Lockhart looks like they just didn't get um, started. And um, young Mark Taylor, four for ten. Pretty great, pretty good effort with the ball. Speaking of a team that was undermanned and put up a pretty good performance, uh, well, both of these sides, the next were, were undermanned a touch, but... Uh, the Rock, Yaron Creek, did enough to sneak over the line in the end in a thriller against Holbrook, who only had the nine players for the day, I believe, or the, at least when they were batting, and they batted first. They could only muster up 91, and I'll tell you what, it was nearly enough. It was. On a first senior game on the um, renovated Holbrook sports ground, locals would have been very keen to uh, make a good impression, but uh, Tom Harriet, who's the son of uh, Bill Harriet, president of Holbrook, uh, he... Uh, Stood alone, really, making 46 for the home side. A um, little bit of support um, at the end, but uh, really it was uh, Tom uh, first and Daylight second in the Holbrook innings. Really good um, effort by him. And um, the Rock, Yerong Creek, would have thought that that might not have been such a bad chase, uh, but they found themselves in a fair bit of trouble. They were um, 4 for 21 and then 5 for 43. Um, the 91 would have looked a long way off. Absolutely, it would have at that point, but they snuck home uh, with one wicket in hand. Uh, a couple of the usual uh, suspects, so to speak, um, Ryan Kirkwood and um, Aaron Ridley, they um, they obviously batted quite well and just got the score pumping up towards 84, but when they lost two wickets, they were nine for 84. It was just, just the last two men in that managed to get... Um, get the result with Ridley unbeaten at the end there. And uh, the last match of the round, Cole Can taking on Osborne and when Cole Can's innings finished ironically again on 91, seemed to be the score of the weekend, um, that was uh, 60 more than Osborne were able to rustle up last time but uh, no such jitters this time. Um, the Osborne crew chased that down very comfortably. Yes, no, we we, um, we were watching this one uh, being live scored where I was on Saturday and uh, we noticed poor old Cole Cairn had, had a horrific start. They were 5 for 33 and um, we did make the point that that still would have been enough to knock Osborne off the week before. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, Josh McDonald, who's a Osborne junior, only just turned 18, he really turned it on. He's a left arm 
and he's got a real slinging action, let down bowler and taking six for 21, just routed Cole Cairn. It was only a couple of couple of fellas at the end of the innings, um, young Oliver Wood and Zach Wilson, who uh, got that score up to 91 for Cole Cairn and gave him a little bit of a chance. Good bowling uh, in anyone's language, six for 21 for the young man. And then uh, with the bats, uh, um, uh, Perryman, uh, Ed Perryman, the skipper, uh, didn't fail two weeks in a row and he got some support at the top. Coming off a of golzer, he would have been very pleased to uh, get that first one away, I'm sure. Um, Ed's pretty quiet. He doesn't say much, but I think he would have had a little smile getting off the mark. And uh, Jack Glamble, um, who, we opened the bat- uh, who opened the batting, you know, 47 not out, uh, Ed on 41, and they chased those runs down in um, 30 overs. In uh, very quick, well, quickish time. I mean, they timed the chase fairly well and were never in any danger of not getting there. So... If we check uh, the ladder just quickly, uh, bearing in mind that we are uh, getting towards the point now where I think we've got one more game to go before you guys go on the Christmas break. And fingers crossed uh, with this massive rain event that, that's going to happen. But um, it's starting to separate a little bit now, the ladder, isn't it? It is. It is. And um, just as we say, that it's disappeared off my screen. But uh, <laughs> no, here it is again. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's right. Well, the Rock Your Own Creek, their good season continues. They're uh, five and one at the top of the table. Um, they had a, um, probably not the most convincing of wins, but uh, you know the, the teams that do well sometimes just uh, manage to get there uh, when the going's tough. So they're they're a win um, a win clear of Waller in second place. Rand who has got the bye this week, so they'll get the six points for the bye. Yep. Um, now Osborne, the ladder hasn't updated electronically, but Osborne and Brock Barham are on the same points, on 24 points. Yep. Um, and Osmond's just got the superior percentage there, so I suppose technically they're fourth. Yep. And uh, Holbrook in at um, Holbrook round out the sixth. They do, with Colcan, Henty, who we're expecting to come and uh, well, Lockhart uh, at the foot of the table, but uh, there's still obviously opportunities there. Um, but that top three and four and five, that, that top five really has separated itself from, I guess, the uh, the bottom four. So the bottom four, a lot they'll fight it out over sixth spot for a finals berth, right? Yeah, unless um, unless we see uh, one of those um, sides really fall in a hole, you would think um, it's going to be difficult to dislodge them for the teams outside the six at mm. the moment. But um, as we know, Henty did a um, great campaign last year running into finals. Um, Cole Cairn have shown a um, bit of flair. Uh, Lockhart are struggling at the moment, but they're pretty confident they're going to have some players. So, I don't know, you just never know. They could string some wins together and um, cause a bit of a ruckus at the bottom half of the six. Well, let's have a look at this weekend's round of matches. Pretty important game, this one at Lockhart. If they can get uh, those players that you mentioned back, they're taking on Holbrook, who hold that sixth spot right now. So, really, uh, if Holbrook do get up and win this one, that puts them in... Uh, the box seat, you'd reckon, to hold on to that sixth spot. If they, uh, if Lockhart can get up, then uh, then it's game on again. Yeah, that would certainly open it up um, and open it up for the sides um, uh, below, um, sort of, you know, at the same level of them, such mm. as Henty and Carl. So, as, as we've said, you know, uh, teams have struggled just to get their best team on the park um, and Harvest is having an impact on that. Uh, this may not be the week for... Lockhart in terms of getting um, that best field on the side, but playing home, they'll be pretty keen to put up a good show for the locals. So mm. that will be um, keenly fought, no doubt. But I, I think Holbrook are going along pretty well. They're a developing side, and I think they might uh, go up there and just shore up their position. Um, the Rock Yarong Creek take on Henty. This will be uh, in your patch, uh, Yarong Creek Rick uh, Oval. Is that on the turf? Well, uh, I was talking to their captain this afternoon. They're very keen to get on the turf. They, mm. they think uh, they'll have it covered now. Um, hopefully the rain doesn't cause too much havoc and there's a good drawing period. Uh, they'll mm. get on the turf. Okay. Otherwise, they'll be on the, the hard wicket. That'll be a really good game. Top of the table. Last year's premiers. You know, I think it'll be a lot closer than um, their positions on the table suggest. Um, Walla, Walla taking on Osborne. Here's the match of the round, folks. This is a... Pretty important game. Osborne have failed a couple of tests so far, but uh, this one's a stern one. Waller, Waller have been in very good form. They're second on the ladder for a reason, so should be a, a really good game, this one. Yeah, I think uh, I think you're right. And um, 
consistency, uh, as you alluded to, is going to be the key here. Osborne have been um, a hot one week and pretty cold the next. Walla have just been going along at a, at a, at a pretty uh, pretty high level and playing very well, as they did last year. They've got a couple of uh, uh, big players to come in after Christmas, so uh, they'd be pretty keen to get a win here and go into the break looking to strengthen their time team over the over the uh, Christmas break. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a struck match one. Then it'll, it'll it'll just come down to, I guess, um, if Osmond can just find a bit of consistency. Um, but I, I reckon they're a good chance to go down and um, spring an upset. And I'll tell you what, this game here's got a bit riding on it as well. Um, last match, and I, this will be a, a really good game as well. Colcan at home are taking on Brock Burham. Now Colcan, seventh at the moment. They... Uh, have been pretty good. I've always thought that when you've got a, a season that's either weather affected or harvest affected or whatnot, sometimes a, a relatively good indicator rather than premiership points is net run rate. And if you look at the net run rate difference between these two sides, it's like 0. 0.006 between them. So I don't think there's much in this. Uh, no, there's not. And um, the big boost for Colcan is they're playing their first game at, at home on their renovated ground. We've, we've had the grounds, um, Henty, Holbrook and Colcan become available in the last couple of weeks. So they'll have a real incentive to, to play well and um, have a have a happy homecoming. Brock Barham, they haven't played for a couple of weeks. They had by two weeks ago and then um, the, the fourth at last week. So they'll be, uh, they'll be itching for a game and they may be a little bit rusty from the break. So, uh, uh, yeah, I think this will be a really good game. Um, Brock Barham on paper looked like the team um, to win this one. But, um, yeah, who knows? Colcan at home for the first time this year. Uh, might just get some troops in last game before Christmas and give them a real shake-up. Yeah, should be a... Uh... A very interesting round in Hume Cricket, and uh, that's where we'll leave it for today. Uh, All the best to everyone having a hit over the weekend in Hume Cricket, and here's hoping we don't see too much rain, mate. Uh, All the very best to you and uh, everyone up there around Hume, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week. Thanks, Jason. I look forward to it.